you can find our lowest car insurance price online, guaranteed. Rain across much of the country tonight with a risk of thunder and some sleet possible on high ground. Cold with lowest temperatures of 0 to 4 degrees. And now you're up to date on News Talk. Off the ball. This, this is News Talk. Now you're welcome along. So coming up on the show this evening, we have Jack McCaffrey in studio. Andy Dunn is also along for Wednesday Night Rugby. Miguel Delaney was at Old Trafford last night as Manchester City put United firmly in their place. Tom English will also join us in the football show from Scotland as this Glenn Whelan heart story, well, continues to be quite nasty and acrimonious. 53106 is the text number. We are at Off The Ball on Twitter. Nathan Murphy here, hello. How are you? And Richie McCormick, hello. Joseph. Jack McCaffrey on the way. Five All-Irelands, three National Leagues, four All-Stars, Young Footballer of the Year, Senior Footballer of the Year, Man of the Match in two All-Ireland Finals, no less, took a year out to travel Africa and further his medical studies naturally, a doctor at Temple Street Hospital, 26 years of age. How inadequate are you? But what has he got going Richie. for him, Joe? What has he got going for Where him? Where did it all go wrong, Jack? Yeah. It's a very impressive resume, isn't it? God, it's sick in your hole, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and he's likeable as well, after all that as well. God damn it. I wish I could dislike the... The dubs are great until you actually meet them. In that, I like to, you know, just get annoyed and angry. Vilify them. Yeah, you know, they've destroyed the game of Gaelic football. Mm -hmm. And then you meet them and they're just nice lads. You're like, oh, God damn it. Yeah, where's the chin I here? regret everything I've ever said. <laughs> uh, he was in earlier on, he was in good form. He sauntered in and said hi to everyone, shook a few hands. And oh, then yeah? um, we sat down politician? for half an hour. He'd be a great politician. Future Minister for Health? If he wanted to. Mm. I'm sure, yes. Yeah, I think man. he's pretty you ask him nice that? for that gig, though. No. Uh. I didn't ask him that. But uh, he was in good form, talked about a few various things. We talked about life at Temple Street, actually, which was interesting. He is finishing up at Temple Street. He's done six months there, and he's off to Kilkenny for the next six months as he continues his training. It takes a long time. Mm. <laughs> Never really ends. He presumably has to travel with that eventually as well. Yeah, he was saying that at some stage. He did say that if I'm still playing in, for Dublin in 10 years... Shoot me. Shoot me. Yeah. Like, it must be... He, clearly, anybody who's a doctor is brilliant at time management. But to be an inter-county player as a trainee doctor in a children's hospital yeah. where there's only a certain amount of leeway they can give you. And he said as well, when you're doing different stints in different places, like you do six months here, six months there, obviously at the start it's tough to ask people you've just met for favours and can I work it this way and can I do it that way? Because everybody would love to, you know, uh, move oh, their yeah, schedule so you, around. So you get every weekend off <laughs> yeah. to play ga while I have to work. Well, exactly. And um, so, you know, he was saying, he thought he was, he was telling them, well, look, once we get this game out of the way on Sunday, it's over. And then, of course, it's a draw in All-Ireland Final and it's another uh, two weeks of begging for favours, but... Uh, in, so when he went to, um, to Temple Street the day after the All-Ireland final and he gave that great interview to Jamie Moore where he spoke yeah. about perspective and sort of flipped it around that actually these games do mean a lot because of what they mean to the people watching them, was he able to count that as a day's work? I, probably, I hope so. Overtime, if anything. Yeah, so he's on the way. We have Miguel Delaney, who was at Old Trafford last night. De Bruyne, Kevin De Bruyne, was asked last night after the game about the plan... Aguero on the bench, Jesus on the bench, seven midfielders, I think, false mm. uh, number nine. And he said of the master plan, which undid Manchester United, we did it in about 15 minutes in the morning. That was about it. That was all it took. We didn't train on Monday, but it's not like we've never done it before. We do it against teams who prefer playing man-to-man, -man, Cardiff, United. Uh, we've done it a couple of times. Bernardo dropped in, made it four against three in midfield. So they have to choose what to do. If they put their defender up there, there's more space behind. If not, then Bernardo is going to be free. That's what we try to do. Simples. And if you're playing against that Manchester United defence, if you give them two options, <laughs> they'll generally pick the wrong one. Yeah. So Miguel is very much of the opinion, and we'll hear from him after 9 o'clock, that there is no sense of panic around Old Trafford. His contacts are very much of the uh, opinion and of the sense that they're going to keep their heads here. They're going to give Solskjaer as much time as is needed. They have now decided post Moyes, Van Gaal, Mourinho becoming just like any other club, chopping and changing, that they are going to revert to loyalty at all costs, through thick and thin. It seems odd though. But it's, it, well, it seems odd because I grew up in the 90s, obviously, when Manchester United were this just juggernaut. And the idea of them being where they are now with the biannual fans calling for a manager's head is just really still hard to comprehend. Probably worse still if you're a United fan. Like, I couldn't give a monkey's about them either way, but it is genuinely odd to have taken that arc to where they're a bleh club, to where they're Arsenal. Mm. Do you think that's what's happening, that 
senior officials at United have thought about this and thought, you know what, we've got into that cycle, we're Manchester United, we want to be above that, so we're going to stick with this for the next six mm. months, even though, from a business point of view, it's bad business. There's it is bad business keeping Ole Gunnar Solskjaer as manager. There's being above it, and then there's ignoring all available evidence. Yeah. And all available evidence suggests this ain't working, and it ain't going to work. Yeah, no, I do think, though, that they've decided to do that, yeah. I think they've figured they've wasted... bad business. Wasted, it's another bad decision. They've, they've, they figured they've wasted a billion in transfers with Moyes to a point. He didn't sign many players, obviously, but then Van Gaal and Mourinho signed totally different types of players going off in different directions and backing each new manager, and they've just decided... Is that not just a fudge? This guy. We're not doing anything. To a point, we're yeah. We're so frightened of making the wrong decision, we won't make any decision. I mean, arguably, it would be very admirable if they had a manager whose credentials they had a bit of certainty in. You know, and they, uh, for, if they stuck with Mourinho... Oh, I know. I, I think that was no. I think that it was. It goes toxic. so toxic. That was too toxic. But I, I think that was too. Only kind of social because he's a nice guy. He has that legendary status. While the supporters are getting on his back, they, it's still not all out war at Old Trafford. No, there's not protests to get rid of Solskjaer because it feels as though they've sort of become resigned to the fact. But like the but I think he's proper decision is you get rid of him and you get Pochettino in. I think there's that, he's that kind of figure at the club that there never will be that kind of open revolt against him. No. It's more so, and it's a harder thing to vocalise, it's more so against the board and against the Ed Woodwards of this world rather than against Solskjaer. And I don't think they want to... They're a very loyal fan base. They don't want to inflict that kind of vitriol upon somebody that they love and brought them so much, you know, amazing times as a player. I just can't believe you haven't talked about Prince Harry straight at the top of the show. <coughs> I just heard the news in the news. Like, this is, this is definitely going to be a nice episode of The Crown in five years' time. Well, I mean, it's... What sort of a lunatic steps away from the royal family to make himself financially independent? I know, what's he doing? Is he doing, like, an arts degree? Or what's going on here? What's, what, 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 what are his plans to be financially independent? I think she's just gone, she's gone back to acting. That's what it's this, all a bit bizarre. I, I, read, I, I quickly read the statement where he talks about Her Majesty the Queen and respecting her still and mm. involving her in this process and the Duke of Edinburgh and what's the Duke of Ed and what's Prince William? What's his title? Cambridge. Something Cambridge. Cam it's like, this is your brother and your father you're <coughs> talking about and the Prince of Wales. Like, you're obviously not stepping away that much. Like, can you remove yourself completely from the royal family? Well, King Edward. Mm. Maybe he just doesn't want to do the charity stuff anymore. No, That's no, he's, is, he's, he's he, moving more into the charity sector. But who'd, like, Philanthropy, he'll be calling it now. And make him turn up at all these different events and kind of go, oh yeah, it gets the royal seal of approval with the lad who's like third in line to the throne. And, you know, here's this, a nice thing that's happening. And he's like, falls to this. I can't be bothered anymore. I just want to go home and watch telly. His wife in particular is having a torrid time from the papers, from the and media. They've given her a rotten time. It's absolutely horrific. Years, yeah. So I would say she's struggling with that. She pretty much admitted that. In, <laughs> and there was an ITV documentary... Mm. last year, late last year, and she admitted how much she was struggling with the whole thing. So I'm sure if your wife is having an absolutely miserable time every time she appears in public, courtesy of the media coverage, and she says, we need to get away from this, I can't take this. Move him to America. Yeah. He'd make a lot of money in America, though. Sorry, what is he doing in America? What, what's his job? Chacha now he'll host. be the prince. Chacha host, reality TV star. New, on Don't e. pro-ams. Is there any other, uh, you've brought this story to our attention. Is there any other I'm details? I'm shocked. Can't believe it was the last story in the news. Yeah. Deserves more than an Anne Finally in fairness. You know, it's big news. I agree, it's big news. It's big news. They're fracturing in the royal family. I think the writing was on the wall in the Queen's speech when she didn't have pictures of Prince Harry up on the table. Did you see that on Christmas Day? No. <gasps> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. It was a major snub. Were you, like, picking them out, or...? You watched the Queen's speech. Yeah. <clears throat> is that a regular thing? Is this a tradition no, in the Malloy it's House? Not, it's not, no, it's certainly not a tradition it's just if, you, if the film ends on BBC, you leave BBC on. It is a, it's kind of a cure, mild curiosity. You watch The Crown, you kind of think, God, it's really extraordinary this is the same person that was hanging out with Winston Churchill back in the day. So, uh, well, there, there was a... When you say, like, hanging out, like, sitting, <laughs> on, sitting on the wall drinking cans, like... It, it was a big story in, like, the media they had done, you know, mag okay. magnified all the pictures that were on the front <laughs> table and noticed that Harry and Meghan weren't there. Oof. Although she did in the speech, obviously note the fact that she'd had a new grandchild. So, I don't know. We can be reading too much into these things, Nathan. Uh, Jesus, we already lads. have, I think. Jack McCaffrey heading down to Kilkenny. Surely more trying than his time in Africa. <laughs> 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 I'm not sure if any of you travelled down there, but it's full of bog warriors. Jesus. That's from Fiona and Donnybrook. Can we distance Bloody ourselves hell. from those comments? Uh, Man United are suffering from poor leadership 
from Alex Ferguson, a great leader sets their successor up for success. Well, I think at this stage it's beyond Alex Ferguson's fault. Yeah. Oh, he seemed to be pulling the strings this time last year. When are the Man United board going to realise Solskjaer is way out of his depth needs to go? My fear is they'll fire him the week after Pochettino takes a job with someone else. It's a bit like having to put your family pet down and thinking, I will give him another few weeks and he might get better, says Kieran. Do you know when they'll do it? Good analogy. They'll do it in that quiet period whereby their season is petering out and it's already been quite evident for a while that they're not going to qualify for the Champions League. And about a game or two before the end of the season, bullet inside the head and they go, well, we want to get a new man in time for pre-season. And everything is taken up with whoever's winning the league or whoever's winning the Champions League and the United story is down mm. the order. Since that initial winning run, have you heard any soundings out of Old Trafford of this great coaching that's happening, a master plan, no. anything positive from no. players, no. from backroom staff? It's always two steps forward mm. and then about three back and then they rescue a crisis with two or three good results. Yeah, you could see them going to Anfield next week and getting a draw. Mm. Suddenly they're the only team to have stopped Liverpool winning all season, twice. Mm. So he has something there. Yeah, something to build on, mm. young players coming through. That's the other thing. I mean, he has presented them as almost plucky underdogs with all these young players. Yeah, that they're summarily selling off to European clubs like Tahith Chong and the Juventus. Aaron in Burr says, the best decision United Board could make now is promote Oli to a technical role and go all out for Poch. I mean, Pochettino is not going to be around for much longer. That is the issue here. Mm. He's going to somewhere. then it haunts them. <clears throat> yes. In the way that Klopp and Guardiola haunt them. Mm. Yeah. Now, we're starting with the news on Joey Carberry, Richie, so it was confirmed today. Jan van Graan was speaking, and it's not good. Yeah, yeah, Joey Carberry, I was going to, I was going to call him Joey Carberry, will almost certainly miss all of Ireland's Six Nations campaign. His Munster head coach, Johan van Graan, has ruled the half out of action for between two and four months because Carberry required surgery on a wrist ligament injury this week. JJ Hanrahan, meanwhile, is rated as 50-50 for Sunday's Heineken Champions Cup trip to Racing due to a hamstring problem. The province will also make a late decision on the fitness of fullback Mike Haley. Munster have added scrum half Craig Casey for Gavin Coombs and hooker Dermot Barons to their panel for the trip to Paris and Van Graan has backed Ben Healy or Rory Scannell to take Hanrahan's place should he be ruled out. He did a bit of the team training um, and the shoot test will be on Friday so we will um, uh, test him on Friday and you know if he comes through uh, he'll play on the weekend. I won't risk him if, if you know the medical team says he's not 100% right and uh, hopefully he does, and if he doesn't, then we're going to back Ben and, and Rory, uh, make a decision on, on one of the two of them, and we've backed our squad the whole way, so, um, you know, hopefully he makes it, but if he doesn't, then uh, we've been in this position before, then we just back the next man in. We're going to talk to Andy Dunn, he's on Wednesday Night Rugby, that's on the way after 8 o'clock. Presumably the headline will be, when Harry left the Pally, says Ed. That's good. Hilton Delaney on Twitter, why are you blaming Solskjaer for all the problems at United when it's the players who are at fault? Yeah, Nathan. The what's manager, Joe. What's that all about? Breaking news. The manager has to take ultimate responsibility. For Lindelof's disgrace of a header last night. Well, then, a strong manager, mm -hmm. John Joe's coming your way half seven tomorrow night, or okay. I'm sure he'll make this point. Yeah. A strong manager walks into that board and says, I need a better centre half, and if they say you're not getting them, he just walks out. Solskjaer's not really in a position to walk away from exactly. the Manchester United job. Exactly. Well, not many managers are, to be no, fair. No, but you're strong enough that when you get the job, you can make those points and the board will listen. They could say, we just bought you Harry Maguire. Can you give us a minute? Injured. <laughs> <laughs> Biggest club in the world. You need backups. I do have sympathy for Solskjaer because the team is just a complete mishmash of different managers buying different types of players, different styles, and they are just not good enough. No, now, they're I think not good enough. Pochettino would clearly get more out of them, there is no doubt. But he has not inherited a good side here. But all of, all of those things are, are true. Mm. But also, modern football is full of creative coaches who have very set game plans, who've thought deeply about what they want to do, and figure a way around that. And if he had some sort of grand master plan where he was coming out saying, well, this is what we're aiming towards, if I just had one or two players in certain positions, but it's not. Like, what's, what's their preferred, preferred style? Is it a defensive counter-attacking team? Is that what he wants to play, or is that what he's been forced to play because they don't have midfielders who can hold on to the ball? I would think exactly the latter, yeah. So if he had the players he wanted to have, what do you think his style would be? Well, we don't know. We don't have a clue. Well, we, whatever Alex Ferguson did, that's what we so, mean. <laughs> what, we, what we did back when we won the treble. Why do you give the job to the guy who doesn't have a plan? Yeah. 
Uh, read the photos. The photos were chosen. This is... The Queen's photos. Dublin 9 Brian here, who is all over this. And I think he's right, actually, because this, was, uh, this point was made in our house when I brought up the scandal of Harry being missing from the photos. <laughs> you just shouted at the TV, whoa, 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 look, look. Pause, pause. Or first. <laughs> he's, uh, Brian says, if you look at recent years, the photos are mostly of the Queen, Prince Philip, the parents, and her direct heirs, Prince Charles, Prince William, and Prince George. It is part of the branding of the monarchy, if you will, to show continuity and the future of the crown. Obviously, Harry doesn't feature. That's some classic subliminal advertising. I like it. Well done. It's very good. Harry, of course, didn't go home for Christmas this year, so that was part of the paranoia around the photos. Klopp finished seventh in his first year, lads. You are being harsh on Solskjaer, David Swords. I do wonder that as well. I wonder are we getting sucked into being overly harsh here on Solskjaer? Like, how do we know he's a bad manager? What's he done that's been so terrible? Nothing. He's done, literally done nothing. <laughs> <Is> <laughs> that's the issue here. But hasn't he shown some promise with certain performances and certain achievements and certain flashes of a team actually that could do something? And it hasn't fallen apart around him. The players haven't down tools. He's kept them on side. He's kept things moving at times, even in the midst of crises. Like, how are we so sure that getting rid of him is the best option? Be, uh, so, and don't just say, well, we know Pochettino's a better manager. Okay, I can't argue with well, that. We don't, know, we don't know getting rid of him would be the best option. But we've been, been harsh enough. But there's been nothing to say that there is, at least with Klopp when he was there, there was a sense that he was building something. There was a style of play from his previous job at Borussia Dortmund that we knew he'd probably want to implement and that if he could get hold of the right players and if he could you know, uh, mould the ones he has, yeah. then he would get the results that we're seeing now. To be fair, the Borussia Dortmund point that's completely, that's what Solskjaer doesn't have in his What have we army. seen at Cardiff and Molde? <laughs> yes, I mean, yeah, no. that's, that's the answer to the Klopp finish seven point, Borussia Dortmund. Uh, where are we going next? Uh, as you mentioned, Stephen Cluxton is likely to play for a 20th season with Dublin. That's according to his county teammate, Jack McCaffrey. It had been speculated that Cluxton may call time in his inter-county career after captaining the Dubs to a fifth All Ireland title in a row. Uh, but in a vignette of the interview you'll hear later, McCaffrey appears confident he'll be lining out alongside the 38-year-old keeper come the summer. I see, I read, I read the thing was on the Irish Independent website, you've signed Stephen Cluxton up for 2020, I, I saw that, yeah, that was this morning. They were very quick to, uh, to, to publish that one. Well, what did uh, you say? You, 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 just, you have a sense he will? I don't know. They, yeah, they're very strange. He just asked me, was Stephen playing next year? And I was a bit taken aback because I didn't know that that was uh, being discussed even. Um, so, again, I, I don't speak for other people, but my understanding is that he is, uh, is ready to go. Um, and wants to play again, so I'm open to correction. I'm sure he'll, he'll ring me this evening if I have that wrong, I'm but sure he will. Th that's what I've gone to press with. That's what he's gone to press <laughs> with. <laughs> I think at this stage, if Stephen Cluxton is going to retire, he's leaving it incredibly late to announce it, so it probably does look like he's sticking around. Unless it's a very Stephen Cluxton move and he just doesn't return. Mm. He doesn't announce anything. Well, we thought the Jim Gavin news was late in coming. Given, yeah. We thought we'd reached a couple of periods whereby, oh, if we're going to know, we'll know by now. And then he took everybody's by surprise. Like, Cluxton, more than likely, probably won't feature in the early stages of the league. Like, well, there were pictures of him as well with his arm in a sling in the last couple of weeks, Cluxton. So maybe there's some sort of a little injury. Right. But it wouldn't be at all surprising, I don't think, if when his retirement comes, nothing is ever said. He just doesn't turn up. I don't think it'll be a big statement. No. Somehow. You think you'll come in here for a sit-down interview? <laughs> sit-down reflection, absolutely. Absolutely. It would be great if he did, though. Oh. Uh, you'd really just, you'd, God, you'd love to hear that his time. Maybe there's a Tommy Walsh, a Tommaso Shea, who <laughs> never did anything, just lurking inside. Yeah. The idea that Cluckhouse and Tommy Walsh is just amazing. If, Tommy, <laughs> if Stephen Cluxton in five years' time is there before a Leinster football championship <laughs> game, talking about meeting Rihanna outside after a great night out in Parnells. <laughs> <laughs> be glorious. Tom says, would any other Premier League club hire Solskjaer if he got sacked by United? No. Tom doesn't want to know what you think. He says no. All right, Grant. Sorry. So he's not good enough, is Tom's take on things. Lads, United 27 points behind Liverpool. They've played a game more. It's halfway through the season. Yes, give Solskjaer a 10-year contract, please, says Ed, who may not be a United fan. Now, Solskjaer has to go. They look like a team who don't know what style they're playing. He's totally out of his depth. The real blame, though, lies with the hierarchy at the club. It is not a well-run club. Well, that is certainly true. A well-run club would never have hired him. Look at the last four winners of the Premier League, including Liverpool this season, all brilliantly run clubs from top to bottom. Don't forget Mick Fitz is a doctor as well. Up the Dr. Dubs is a text in. God damn it. How many doctors do Mayo have? Lots. They just don't play for our intercounty. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, uh, they'd love to be doctors, but you know, they have to be commuting up and down That's true. to play for their county. That's true. We could all be doctors. Could we commitments. could all be doctors if we could play intercounty football oh, yeah. in our home city. Exactly. Exactly. Now, uh, Kyle Hayes. Yep. 
Former young hurler of the year, Kyle Hayes, has been granted bail, having been charged with violent disorder. The Limerick man, along with another individual, Evan Kelly, appeared before Limerick District Court today, charged in connection to an incident in Limerick City, which took place in October. A substantial file is being prepared for the Director of Public Prosecutions, and the case has been adjourned until May the 6th. Now, Leicester manager Brendan Rodgers is hoping to continue his 30-game unbeaten run tonight in cup competitions. His side hosts Aston Villa in the first leg of the Carabao Cup semi-final. Rodgers hasn't lost a domestic cup tie since a defeat to Villa as Celtic boss, as Liverpool boss, pardon me, back in 2015. His uh, record helped with being Celtic boss, of course. Uh, Kasper Schmeichel starts in goal for Leicester. Ricardo Pereira, Johnny Evans, Shagdar Sonunchu and Christian Fuchs, along with Ben Chilwell, are in their back five. Dennis Prett, Yuri Tielemans and James Madison make up the midfield, with Iosi Perez in support of Jamie Vardy. Uh, for Aston Villa, Conor Harrahan is on the bench and they start without a recognised striker. Orion Nyland is in goal. Ezri Konza, Tyrone Mings, Courtney Howes and Frederick Gilbert are their back four. Douglas Luiz, Marvellous Nakamba and Neil Taylor in midfield with Ahmed El Ghazi, uh, David, or not David Trezeguet, but rather just Trezeguet and Jack Grealish as the front three in kickoff at the King Power is at eight. Now we'll be talking about this next story with uh, Willow Callahan in the next hour. It's a strange one coming out of Leash. Yeah, the Camogie Association say they're in contact with the Leash County Board and indeed the players regarding their participation in this year's inter-county competitions. Leash said yesterday they'd be withdrawing from the league and championships due to the unavailability of players, they said. In response, the Camogie Association say they'll speak to all parties involved in an effort to keep Leash participating in this year's competitions. Yeah, we'll talk about that around a quarter to nine or so. Lads, why must every conversation be based on the latest bad results, says Kieran and Dublin. Welcome to our life, Kieran. <laughs> what, what else are we meant to talk about? In football, as in life, this is getting philosophical, okay. which I like. I am always a fan of that. In football, as in life, time must be given to affect change. If I hear Pochettino mentioned one more time as the basis for every analysis, I will no longer be able to fight the overwhelming urge to lose it, says Kieran in Dublin. Kieran and Dublin, unfortunately, football is not like life. Is it not? No. A bit like life. Do you not agree with his point that any manager is going to need some degree of time to affect change? Solskjaer's had what? No, a I season? think the, the job now is that, as manager, the attributes that are needed are to affect change quickly. That you don't get three years to affect change. Whoever goes into any job at a club like that needs to be able to change things rapidly. This is what Manchester United, though, are trying to do. They're trying to go back and say, well, sometimes managers do need time. Ferguson got time. Admittedly, he had more of a CV than Solskjaer has, but it's unfortunate that they've decided to give their next manager a lot of time when it's Solskjaer. And where has that been proven to work in recent times? In recent times? Well, how often does a manager get time? That's a good question. Maybe again, Jurgen Klopp is the example, though there's been clear progression from Europa League finals to Champions League finals to yeah. winning a Champions League. Yeah. Klopp's not a bad example, though. I mean, it would, I mean, there was never a time when you could have conceivably sacked him. No, there was, a, there was a spell of a couple of months, probably two and a half years ago, when it felt around October time they weren't going to contend for a title, probably because Manchester City were so good and there were sort of question marks of, well, Pep didn't win the league. Far away. Did Pep didn't win the league in his first season. That was never. A, a sacking offence either. And everybody knew that was going to be a three years at least kind of deal when he went in. Is there an example of a manager in a similar plight to Solskjaer now who has been given time recently? Who's turned it around. Who has, who has turned it around, yeah. Because that was, the, that was the real criticism of Mourinho, that when things go wrong, he's never able to turn it around. It just gets more and more toxic. Yeah. Where are the examples of managers who are under... Nobody... I've, I haven't met anyone who feels this is going to improve dramatically between now and the end of the season, that they're going to suddenly go on a run where they cruise into fourth place. Mm. It's going to be this stop-start every couple of games, build momentum, take a beating, we question whether he'll survive. And they may nick fourth place because, I think as Gary Breen put it, it's some sort of slow bicycle race mm. for fourth spot where each of them keeps slipping up. So there's going to be no dramatic improvement. Is he commanding enough to go in and get the players he wants during the summer? Are Manchester United as big a draw with him there to get the players he wants? So where does this end? Like, worst case scenario, I think, for United fans is it drags on until next October, much like Mourinho did, and you've wasted another season. Yeah, I will. I, and I, suddenly you're. I would be absolutely eight shocked. Eight years is it since they won the title? 20, it will be by then. 2013. 2013. I would be absolutely shocked if he is not still there come next October, next August, November, right. December. Like, I, I, I absolutely think he's got another calendar year in him, probably. But is modern football not that immediate impact? That actually, you get Pochettino in now. Mm -hmm. He has his role, hopefully brings a boost, gets into Champions League. You spend a bucket load of money in the summer. Texas just lost it. 
Kieran's just lost it. He's gone. You mentioned Pochettino. But I think you're right. Look, with Pochettino lurking out there, they should go and get him because Klopp and Guardiola haunt Manchester United. They could have got both of those mm. managers if they'd been a bit more assertive and they haven't. And look what's happened. And could you imagine if Guardiola or Klopp had gone in at United? And it's even worse for Pochettino because he's been linked to the role for yeah. years. He's literally <laughs> waiting for them to call. Mm. What does he have to do? Max Allegri's uh, No, I, I agree with you, but I do think that United I feel they have almost betrayed their grand tradition of sticking by a manager over the last couple of years and it hasn't worked for them. But so that is all I'm going to Solskjaer speak of, the Manchester United way. Yeah, no, it is the, the Manchester, Manchester United way. way that I know of my entire life is winning. That is the yeah. Manchester United Manchester way. Manchester United way is Alex Ferguson what as your manager. Is, exactly. Yes, and winning. Yeah. And doing whatever it took to win. Yeah. We have Jack Getting Mc... rid of your best player, no matter what, if you felt it was the best thing. There's no ruthlessness about that squad or the direction of that club whatsoever at the moment. No, it's all very good. On the field or off. Miguel Delaney will be on the football show. We won't talk about Manchester United until then. That will be after nine o'clock. Tom English will join us as well. This Glenn Whelan heart story, all very... Nasty, if you haven't been following that. Glenn Whelan was speaking today. Uh, we've got Andy Dunn on the way after 8 o'clock with the rugby. And up next, Jack McCaffrey. Off the ball on News Talk. From watching the whales dance offshore in San Francisco to sampling the delicious street food of Mexico or exploring the historical heritage of Beijing. Wherever in the world you want to be, you can get there from your doorstep with KLM Royal Dutch Airlines. Book your dream deal at klm.ie by January 21st and fly via Amsterdam from Dublin or Cork Airport. Make your dream a reality with KLM. Everybody reacts differently to the shocking affordability of the Dacia Duster. The opportunist, I've heard enough, where do I sign? The skeptics, zero deposit, <laughs> too good to be true. And our competitors, shocked into silence. The Dacia Duster from Dacia.